Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today's video is going to answer two questions or be part viewer suggestion, part answering a question. So we'll start with the question first. So the question usually comes when I show this tank, but it's something that applies to most of my tanks. But when we get into looking at equipment, so and under here where the sump is, there's a little box with a digital display and people are quite often saying, what the hell is that thing? So the answer is quite simple, it's a heating controller, it's a temperature controller for your aquarium. That particular one's an Elitech STC1000, uh, it's a kind of more of a DIY end of the market. I have made videos about it before so I'll stick a link up here, you can have a look at it. Very old video, very embarrassing, but you know, it does the trick. And if you can't be bothered to watch that, basically there's something that I find really important. If you're going to use heaters in your aquarium, Nine times out of ten, if anything goes wrong, it's going to be the heater. There's things that are mass-produced. People that, if you tend to go for the cheaper end of the market, they will break. Nine times out of ten, they will break by just not working, but sometimes they break by sticking on. So heaters themselves are many and varied in type, but generally they all sort of do the same thing. There is a heating element and there's a thermostat in them contained within a glass tube, a plastic container or a metal tube or whatever it might be. But when it fails, it's generally going to be the element will fail and it will just refuse to heat. Fine, not a problem. All it does is it gives you time to go out and get a new one. Uh, you notice the water getting a bit cold, fish get a bit chilly, don't eat as much. Generally a long-term problem as things slowly deteriorate. The other way they fail is when the thermostat fails and it sticks on. And what that does is boil your fish. So a heating controller is essentially something that lives in between the heater and the tank to give you an extra layer of protection. So you would generally plug this into the controller. The controller has a temperature probe which lives in the tank somewhere. You set this maybe one degree above what you want your ideal temperature to be. And if this fails, you then get another layer of protection in the controller that's going to cut off the power to this if it sees the temperature creeping up too high. Now with the Elitech one that I'd bought before, you can hook that up with a heater and a cooler, so it will maintain the temperature either way. Um, I generally use them in my fish room and in my main tanks just to make sure that they don't overheat because I will generally have my hands in most of the tanks most days and will be able to tell, oh, that's a bit cold, grab another heater, bring them out. A lot of people will tell you you only really need these things if you use cheapo heaters, so your cheapo glass heaters. But I've had a tank of very expensive discus boiled with an Eheim Jaeger heater, which is one of the more expensive ones. So just for peace of mind, for the amount of money that it actually costs, heating controllers can't go wrong. Which takes me on to part two of this video where I reached out to my Discord. If you want to join my Discord server, I'll put a link somewhere. It'll be in the description. Come along, say hello, make yourself known. Um, I put a call out there saying, is anyone thinking about buying some equipment? Do you want me to test it for you? I had some Amazon vouchers lying around. So somebody reached out and said, yeah, heating controllers. What's the Inkbird like? So we shall find out. I bought myself the Inkbird. Ugh. Uh, wireless heater controller, the ITC306A. So we'll give it a go and we'll try it out. Turned up in here. First impressions are, it's a lot easier. It's kind of plug and play in comparison to the Elitech. So while I unplug all this, if you did watch uh, the Elitech video, I had to make my own housing for it. I had to wire it up. I had to do all the soldering and cutting and if you're not very handy, it can be a bit of a, a mangled mess. But this, it's an all-in-one solution. So what you get is your power pack, where you have two plugs. So this will run two heaters. So you plug the heater into there, then your controller part itself, and then it has a probe. So this is the bit that will go into the tank that you want to monitor the temperature of, and a plug. It's a digital tool. It's a digital display, so fairly easy to read, but we'll get it plugged in and we'll take a look at it. The first thing I noticed about the construction in general, very solid, very well put together. Both the unit itself has a hanging strip as well as the plug sockets element. So you can hang both of these inside your cabinet or anywhere that's convenient for you really. But yeah, really well put together. The wires are properly stuck in there. There's nothing... There's nothing cheap about this. It doesn't look like it's made on a shoestring. It looks like someone's gone into it. So we've got 
as well two probes here and again the probes they look fairly solid there's no like frayed bits or easily chipped it's good quality plastic and um, really happy with it from that point of view um, numbers are really easy to read, might not be quite so easy in the camera, but get perfectly clear. It's fairly bright and sunny in here, uh, and I can still read everything that I need to see. So obviously what makes this different or stand out from any of the other heating controls is it's a Wi-Fi heating controller, um, as denoted by the little Wi-Fi signal up here, um, and light to denote it's working, which means you can control everything, you can set everything up from your phone. Which, let me tell you, is no bad thing at all, because having gone through the setup on the device itself, it is complicated. And that's probably worth talking about a little bit as well, because I've watched some videos of other people who have got this device, some tutorials on the internet, and there's a lot of nonsense out there. This is a device that has two probes. That does not mean you can run it on two tanks. The idea between uh, having two probes is you can put them at different levels of your aquarium, and it will error if the variance between these two is more than a set amount. I think it's five degrees or something like that. To let you know that the probes are duff rather than the tank's about to explode. It doesn't mean that you can set two individual temperatures for each probe which someone else has suggested. Um, it doesn't mean that you can set different highs and lows based on each probe. It's literally, it will take an average of the two readings and that's the temperature that it's going to give you and it's going to monitor to make sure that they're within tolerance of each other. So if we look at them, it's really pretty simple the way it's meant to work and it tries to make it as complicated as possible during the setup. So my advice would be get yourself through the Wi-Fi setup so you can control it from your app rather than trying to do it on the device because the device itself uh, just lo lots of acronyms and letters that don't actually mean anything. Um, but here, you can see the screen, it's fairly self-explanatory. What you're seeing is this is the temperature in the tank, or wherever your probes are, which corresponds to this top value here. And this bottom value here is the high temp that you've set, where it's going to cut the power uh, to the tank. Down here, you'll see T1 and T2. They're your temperature values that you set. So this is still set to the default, so it's saying, I want the temperature to be between 25 and 26. You can set that to whatever you want. Um, if I put this in my discus tank, for instance, I'd probably say I want the temperature to be between 27 and 30, or 28 and 31, or something like that. And that would be fine. I've seen some people say, oh, this is the temperature for probe 1, and this is the temperature for probe 2. That's just not the case. Um, these are your max values. Um, and it's similar up here. This is your running temperature. Aha! We have... Going through an interesting thing here. I don't know how to make the noise stop. <laughs> Sharp. Ah, yes, I do. Press the button. So what that means is, because I've had the two probes here, I had one up high near the window and one down low near the um, the floor. The temperature difference between the two probes was high enough to make it error. So that's the audible alarm you get with any of the alarms. You get different codes. Um, E1 or E2 is the probe, uh, is abnormal temperature up or down. E4 is this one, which is the difference is more than 3 degrees Celsius between the two. Uh, E5 is the continuous heating alarm, so we'll come on to that in a bit, but it basically means that it, it's been on for too long. So if we get into the settings on this, you can see here what we've got some options. We've got the temperature units, you can have uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius. Temperature calibration, so if you have a thermometer you trust and this is displaying a slightly different temperature, you can put it out by one or two degrees. Uh, high temperature alarm value and low temperature alarm value, they're fairly self-explanatory. So for instance, I would set these at, um, I don't know, let's say 30 degrees. So this is the temperature it will alarm at rather than the temperature it will cut the power off at. So if something else goes wrong, at least you've still got that. A continuous heating time, that's a value that you can set to decide how long it should take to get you to your target temperature range. So you'll get a, an error or you'll get an alarm that will say, I've been on for six hours now and I've still not managed to get to that range, so maybe the heater's dead and it'll tell you that. And that is really 
that. There's not much more to it than that. There are lots of other claims about these having replaceable probes. They don't. Um, but it's a very solid, so far, bulletproof solution to a heating controller. It's not quite as um, fully featured as some of the other models. This is the 306A. Um, I think 308 is the one that comes with the replaceable controllers and probes. Um, but it looks like it will do the job and it is very very solid and I really like the construction of it it's not it's not offensive, it's not big and bulky the fact that I'll get notifications to my phone is pretty good over time you can look at trend data so this has only been running for a little while so you can see that it hasn't done much so there are other models in the range that can give you many more options such as setting day and night modes um, but this is just your plain bog standard one. I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look and see if it's something that you want to get yourself. But yeah, I mean, for a, an easy, simple plug and play solution, it's pretty damn good. So that's my review of the Inkbird 306A. It's definitely worth a recommendation. If you were thinking about buying something, I wouldn't put you off it. It's, it does a job. It's nice and compact. It feels fairly solid and well built. If you want to know how it lasts over time, then get in touch, join our Discord group, join our Facebook group. Uh, I'll post updates after a few months, make sure I'm still happy with it. But so far, so good. And I would definitely put, um, put this on my recommended list. It's a lot easier than getting the Elitech one, for instance. I know that Nicru and D&D, I think it is, make some very similar ones to this, which are your more plug-and-play ones. Might try them over time. If you're interested in see that, let me know in the comments if you want to see a comparison of those. But I like the, the smart feature. I do like anything that comes with Wi-Fi attached to it. You can't go wrong with it. So if you're thinking about it, go for it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, thanks very much for joining me. If you like this kind of thing and this is your first visit here, please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.